My name is Emily Fong Noel Ogi of Let Us Farm. You are welcome to Let Us Farm page. So today we are going to be discussing about cannibalism in catfish farm. So we shall know what is cannibalism. Then we shall talk about how to stop this cannibalism in our pond. In the farm so before we go for that if this is your first time of seeing me and this is let us farm page all we do here is we try to provide practical solutions to all our agri problems so in case you are having any issue in your farm all you need to do is simply do a two to three minutes video and send it to me please when doing this video do it when you are feeding your fishes so this will give me an overall insight on the problems they are having and I will be able to provide you a practical solution to solving this problem. Remember, these services are free. And please, mind you, we are not forming any WhatsApp group. So we are not forming any Telegram group. So should anyone contact you that you should send your number, that we're having any Telegram group or WhatsApp group, please discard that. It is not me and I don't know what they are doing. So all we do here, we we'll do it for every one of us to see and learn. So... Like I said, we shall be discussing about cannibalism. What causes cannibalism? How do we stop cannibalism in our catfish pond? What are the effects of cannibalism? I'll be right back. What you're looking at now is a cannibalized uh, catfish. So this is the, the head of the catfish, it's Clara's catfish, seven months old. Ordinarily, this uh, catfish should have been weighing up to two kg plus, because from the pond, most of them like this weigh two kg plus. But you can see the level of cannibalism. This happens. Sometimes it happens when a fish is weak and others descend on it. Or injury can cause it. A lot of things can cause it. But it's not a regular feature. So when you see it once in a while like this, don't panic. Welcome back. So what is cannibalism in catfish farm? As you may all know, fishes are very cannibalistic in nature. That is, they are prone to eating one another. And they even eat anything that you may throw in the pond once they are hungry. They are very cannibalistic. They don't spare anyone. So this is one of the traits of a catfish. Now, in your pond, you can stock 1,000 fishes. And on their own, they will cannibalize 100 to 200 fishes. So sometimes when you look at your pond, you just see that some overnight like this, they become so big. They may be the predators, predators eating others. And you may never know. But they do this thing. Once they notice that one is weak, they attack that one and finish it. Now, this is a very sad reality because it reduces the number of your stock, causes injury, body harm to some of the fishes. And this does not in any way help any farmer. Because instead of you to go front, you are coming down. But however, this particular issue, sometimes, yes, the fishes, they have it in them. But it is something that we can control. And it is something that we can actually stop. So we have many instances that in some ponds you go, you don't, you, you, if, in fact, if you see it, maybe just one or two that was eaten. Because those ones, maybe they were terribly weak. And you didn't see them on time. So there are ways that you can use and control this situation in the pond. Now, the first thing that makes fishes to cannibalize is hunger. So if you stock catfish, always try and make provision for their feeding. Do not try to delay their feeding for any reason. You are doing yourself no good. Once they are hungry, they look for one that will be a prey and they will eat on it. Once they feast on that one, you only see the skull if it's on a concrete or in tarpaulin pond. If it's an eating pond, it's only during harvest that you may see it. If not, you will never see it. Just like the, the clip I showed you now, imagine a fish that is supposed to be weighing almost 2 kg being finished eating up like that. That's a very big loss. That's an economic loss. 
to the farmer. The farmer loses heavily on this. So the first issue that causes this is hunger. Like I said, they are naturally uh, cannibalistic in nature. But then, when they are now hungry, it now increases the chances of them cannibalizing on another fish. So, how do you stop this issue of hunger? Plan for their feeding. Feed them very well. They say an angry man, an angry, a hungry man is an angry man. In fishes, when they are hungry, they destroy. So, plan for their feeding. Feed them very well. Now, the thing about fish is, like I always say, fishes, they have a very slow digestive system. So, meaning that if they are fed well, they will not have the opportunity to even attack any other fish. They will be so weak and lazy, trying to digest what they've been fed. So, if you can be able to be feeding your fishes very well, you are actually making the one, they will gain weight. Two, you reduce the instances of them cannibalizing one another. So, you can see that you have actually achieved two results. So with that particular issue, you discover that this issue of them cannibalizing is something that you have actually solved. Now, there's another, another issue that causes, that triggers cannibalism in, in the catfish pond. Spacing. So when you have a tight pond, you know, because the pond is tight, it reduces the ability of these fishes to eat. So even if you have the food to give them, many of them will not be able to eat because this pond is tight. So as the pond is tight, they can't be able to feed very well. And once they are not able to feed very well, they now start feeding on flesh. Believe it or not, the flesh is sweeter. So they start feeding on flesh. And once they start feeding on flesh, it is finished. So before you know, they will even eat more than what you expect them to eat in the pond. So always make sure that you have enough pond space for your fishes. And once this pond space is available, it even reduces the amount of them the risk of them having injury. Injury leads to cannibalism because once these fishes are injured and there are traces of blood, that blood instinct affects the brain and once it affects their brain, they attack other fishes and prey on them. So these are part of the effects of overstocking in a pond. So, but when the pond is free, they hardly bump on each other. Every one of them is playing around. Then the, 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 the risk of them having injury is drastically reduced. And with that, you have solved a problem that you never knew that you are solving. Because there will be no cannibalism. And then the fishes will also have the opportunity of having space to grow very big. And giving you that kind of decent result that you are looking for. Then there is another thing that people normally don't consider. But this is a fact. If you have dogs, you would have noticed that even in dogs, when you feed them raw meat, you are just gingering them up. So they become used to raw things. So they always eat raw. Anyone they see, they will eat. But when you feed them cooked meat, you discover that you have limited their ability to even like eating raw meat. Now, in fish, when you start getting raw, raw flesh and giving them, because some, some farmers always scavenge for their fish, claiming that the economic situation is bad. But the truth is that you were the one that stocked them and you actually stocked to your capacity. So it's not about you saying the economic situation. Did you actually know what you were going into? So you can't blame anybody because you bought it, you bought the pond and you stopped. So it's not about saying uh, somebody doesn't want to consider. No, in business, you are supposed to grow. So you don't just jump because you think that other people don't know what they're doing. You just jump and overstock and then you now start scavenging. Now, the issue is that when you scavenge, you are going on the road, you see dead animal, you carry put in the pond. Apart from the incidence of infection from a dead decaying animal you are giving them. Because like I said, once the fishes are hungry, they will eat. Now you are introducing flesh to them. They start eating flesh. Some people will go to slaughterhouses and gather uh, all this fresh meat there and give them. They will eat because they are hungry. You will be told that the, the thing is highly proteinous. Yes, it is highly proteinous. They are hungry, they are going to eat. But what happens is that now you are now stimulating the desire, the appetite to cannibalize on other fish. So once they see any opportunity on another fish, having a small flesh open, they cannibalize on that fish because of what you have already programmed in their system. So this is a fact. So that's why sometimes it, I don't really encourage people always going to scavenge because you, you, you want to get food, uh, free meat and all this is like giving them. It's not always necessary because of 
the, 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 the what you are trying to stimulate on the fishes. This is a fact, but many people will think it's not a fact. But that's what happens. So the more you put all these flesh things, chicken intestine, meat, you go to scavenge for all these things, you are actually stimulating that appetite for your fishes to cannibalize. So these things increase their cannibalizing ability. So for us to achieve very good result and less of this cannibalistic instinct in our pond, what you do is make sure that you get your pond spacing very correct. Make sure that you feed your fishes every time to satisfaction. Make sure that the water level in your pond is at least three feet and above. When you do this, you have created space, you have created food, you have created opportunity for them to relax. You have actually reduced the opportunity of them to cannibalize on other fishes. And then your result will be amazing at the end. Have I said anything to confuse us the more? Do you have any questions? Do you totally understand all I have said now? If you have any questions, kindly use the comment section. And until I come your way next time, my name is Emily Fonwell Ogi of Let Us Farm. Keep farming, it's a way of life. Hey y'all, come look at this.